Intel's Alder Lake N CPUs launched in early 2023, setting a new bar for the ultra budget segment, and chips like the N100 are pretty much everywhere in mini PC land. With approximately a two year release cycle, we're due for a successor pretty soon. And to much surprise out of nowhere, Intel whips out a new CPU, the N150, and even gives it a new codename of Twin Lake, but doesn't even bother to list it on the Intel Arc website. So is it something new, a refresh? or something else. Well, Beelink's EQ14 is one of the first mini PCs to feature the Twin Lake N150, and the mini PC is very much like its predecessor, the EQ13. It looks the same, feels the same, and again features an inbuilt power supply. Yep, it's the same blue plastic box with a CPU switch. While we don't have any official specs, the unofficial ones show a refreshed CPU with higher clock speeds, and the assumption that the N150 will perform better in every way over Intel's N100. Right? Right? Boy was I wrong. At the time of this video, B-Link's EQ14 is available for US$219 on the official website, or $190 from Amazon.com, with 16GB of RAM and a 500GB SSD. In the box is a power cord, HDMI, and manual. The ports are unchanged from the EQ13. That's a USB 3 Type A 10 gigabit, along with a USB C 10 gigabit, which is data only. There's also an audio jack and clear CMOS. The back has another two USB 3 10 gigabit, a USB 2, dual HDMI 2.0, and Realtek Gigabit LAN. So a maximum of two displays at 4K 60 with this one. An Intel AX101 Wi-Fi 6 Bluetooth chip is included. Intel's Twin Lake N150 refresh is 4 cores, 4 threads with UHD graphics. Apparently, the only difference is a higher boost frequency on the CPU and GPU side. Maybe Intel will put up an ARC page soon. We can only hope. But that's okay, I understand. They've got bigger problems at the moment. Opening up the Mini is just as annoying as all the recent B-Link units. First, you need to pluck out these rubber covers over the screws which are even worse than glued on rubber feet. After that, it's pretty easy going. Four screws and then lift the lid. The internal power supply is here and there's one stick of DDR4 3200, same as Alder Lake and Minis. It still only supports single channel memory. A nice feature of the EQ14 is dual M.2 NVMe slots. One supports Gen 3 X4 speed, while the other X1. Don't get too excited though, B-Link has included an M.2 SATA drive in the dual compatible slot, so you won't get those NVMe speeds out of the box. Windows 11 Pro is included and the malware scan came back clean. Unfortunately, Ubuntu did not work properly with Twin Lake off the USB like it did with Alder Lake and CPUs. Seems the graphics driver is different and isn't supported yet. Okay, so now for the exciting benchmarks to see how the N150 holds up against the N95, N97, N100, N200, and more. In single core Cinebench, there's a slight improvement. Not N97 or N200 level, but it's something. In multicore with the default settings, the N150 was behind some of the better performing N100s. Oh. After increasing the power limit in the BIOS, it matched the top minis. Still, that didn't seem right. So I asked B-Link about it, and they confirmed they saw no multi-core improvement either. Oh. Intel's N150 is almost as disappointing as their previous CEO. Thank you, Papa. Yeah. <laughs> Geekbench also saw a slight improvement in single core, putting the EQ14 in first place for this batch of results. And in multi-core, it's another disappointment. Not only not showing any improvement, but not even matching some of the N100s. H.264 video encoding is also pretty unimpressive and doesn't beat out the N100s. So only a slight single core improvement on the CPU side. But what about integrated graphics? Well, B-Link said they did see an improvement. I did not. Oh. The EQ14 performed like plenty of other minis with DDR4 in DX11, DX12, and Steel Nomad. And just to confirm, I fired up an emulator that's GPU bound, and it performed the same as the N100 in Mario Kart Wii, with a slight drop in frame rate in the same spot. I also tried a few other games like Valorant, and saw no upside. Spike down, see. Enemy down. I got 
One enemy remaining. Based on these performance metrics, I would have called the CPU an N105 and not given it a new code name. But whatever, maybe a different mini will yield greater results. Or maybe not. So Intel's new N150 in the B-Link EQ14 is basically an N100 and should be treated as such when making the decision of whether to buy it or not. At 190 US dollars on Amazon.com, it is above many N100 minis, including B-Link's own, but those have less features. All right, on to the audio latency test. Latency Mon gives the EQ14 a pass, even with Cinebench running in the background. There should be no dropouts happening during audio production. Happy days. Adobe Premiere works okay with the N150, you can do some simple 1080p projects, which give the CPU a real workout. To get into the BIOS, mash the delete key during startup. If you want to increase the power limit for slightly better multi-core performance, hit to advanced, power and performance, CPU, power management control. Then view configure turbo options. Set PL1 and PL2 to 30,000 and you'll be maxed out. Save and exit. Hardware monitor allows you to mess with the fan settings, although it works fine as is. Wake system from S5 is available. And in chipset, you can set the state after G3. That's all I could find that is typically requested. 3D Mark storage benchmark shows the EQ14 rocking the fastest M.2 SATA drive. And it doesn't heat up at all with one of the lowest temps recorded. Bluetooth range isn't great at 5 meters or 16 feet and is almost a third of the range of the Mini with external Wi-Fi antennas. Speaking of Wi-Fi, it was fine at 12 meters or 39 feet using the 5G band. No network problem notifications while playing a full game session of Valorant. Idle power draw of 10 watts is nothing special, and the N150 uses pretty much what you'd expect from an older Lake N. I mean, Twin Lake. Maximum CPU temp was nice and low, whichever power limit you use. And B-Link is one of the few companies that really focuses on reducing fan noise, although that's only something they've started to do recently. The EQ14 is a very quiet, actively cooled mini. Not silent like the fanless minis, but low enough that it shouldn't bother anyone either. It meets my needs, and I hate fan noise even more than glued on rubber feet. When it comes to footprint, the EQ14 is average size for the budget mini PC range, taking up just over a half liter of volume. And with all those tests out of the way, let's summarize the findings. Beelink's EQ14 is a very quiet mini PC, has good cooling and dual M.2 2280 NVMe slots. The inbuilt power supply will either be something you like or a deal breaker. Intel's N150 performance is unimpressive at least in this mini. B-Link's EQ13 with the N100 would likely perform very similarly. No DDR5 is included for the price. Much like the EQ12 and 13, this one comes off as a premium budget option. It's a nice mini PC, but you're paying extra for it. If you're looking for something cheaper from B-Link, which holds up fine, there is the Mini S12 Pro, which is quite a bit cheaper and comes with Intel's N100 CPU. You can check out that review right here. Cheers!